I think they're also a carrier for all kinds of biological and chemical warfare. So I don't think they're dropping them on us right now, but they seem to be preparing. I think that they're, they're getting people used to seeing these things, and they're getting the military used to doing it. So they're practicing. Yeah, I think most people have noticed chemtrails because it's not natural to have something crisscrossing in, in your sky and staying around for hours. And so they could combat global warming this way. So one of the things they're trying to do, apparently, is put metal uh, particles into the air. They fall down, you know. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but anyway, that's one of the reasons. A uh, chemtrail looks like a jet uh, fume, but the, uh, the jet um, discharge only lasts for about 15 or 16 seconds, whereas the chemtrail lasts for hours. And, and you can also see it keeps getting wider and wider, and if you look at it closely, it's dripping things. Now, uh, from a former worker at the Oak Ridge nuclear plant, I found that uh, the approach of our government to chemtrails is twofold. One is they think if they put metals up there over, uh, you know, places where there were cities or groups of people, they could deflect the sun's rays back up again. The other is um, what they're calling uh, aerial pharmacopoeia. And they're using as their precedent the fact that uh, people started adding iodine to salt in order to prevent goiters in areas that were, had low salt. So they said this has a precedent. So there are all kinds of things going on with these chemtrails. I think they're outrageous. They don't belong in our sky, and they're uh, probably messing up things they don't even know about. And and we don't need this kind of, you know, dosing the population with uh, unknown chemicals and messing up the body metabolism. So they can put chemicals into those chemtrails that come down on people and um, try to modify some of the bad effects of pollution. I think they're also a carrier for all kinds of biological and chemical warfare. So I don't think they're dropping them on us right now, but they seem to be preparing. I think that they're, they're getting people used to seeing these things and they're getting the military used to doing it. So they're practicing, and they're probably practicing the things they consider relatively harmless, whether they really are. You know, we get fooled by a living system. Things that we think are harmless are not. And I, I find it very reckless to be putting things into the atmosphere without telling people, without knowing what they're going to do. And uh, it's, a, it's certainly an outrageous approach to global warming. They ought to be joining the Kyoto uh, Pact and uh, reducing the uh, harmful emissions, not adding more to the atmosphere. They, they, they totally deny it. They just say it's, uh, it's just the exhaust from a jet motor. They totally deny it. People have been trying to find out all over, uh, you know, what it is. I think there is uh, an organization now in uh, Phillipsburg in Pennsylvania. There's also a fairly large organization in Toronto. But I saw them over Paris. When, they, when you come in from overseas and you're up above the clouds, they're all crisscrossed like a checkerboard over Paris. Uh, it's over Geneva. It's, uh, you know, so I mean, I've seen this myself. I'm sure it's over other countries. It's, it's, in, it's in England. It's in uh, Belgium. So, you know, it's all over there. 
they're doing this all over the earth. There has to be collusion, yes, because it's all over. I don't know. I mean, I don't know whether it's just Western Europe and and the U.S. or because I haven't been in Asia recently, and I so I don't know whether they have it there. I mean, this might be just shared among friends. <laughs>